we use a how do we use a tool to help us create maps from the community? And I'm gonna leave it up in the description right now. And I want to introduce you to Dave Bradley, who will be introducing us and giving us a little tutorial on how to use the app. So welcome, Dave. I am very excited and grateful for you for you to be here. We want to make this accessible. How do we do that? Can we do that? We we uh, we can we can do that. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, thank you, Elsa. Um, yeah. So what? Uh, I'm really glad to be here. And uh, what, what I want to do today is uh, I think that Mary. There's a uh, Mary from King County um, uh, put together a document, which I, I don't think it's yet. <clears throat> excuse me. It's not yet on the website. I think at least I. I couldn't find it at a quick glance, but it will be. And uh, what, what Mary also did is she created a, a Seattle starter map in the app DRA, Dave's Redistricting, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I'm co-author of that with uh, a few other people. Um, and so I'm going to kind of talk through a little bit uh, using that starter map about what, you know, what Mary was talking about, because you'll have that uh, information as well, and then go into some other things like how to build a community map, and um, and then just, you know, get into a little more detail about certain things that hopefully will make it a little easier for you to, to use this app. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, and Dave, I just wanted to let you know, we, I, we sent this uh, um, instructions to the participants today, so they should okay. have them. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to my Chrome window here and share that. Okay. Okay, so can you see my screen? It has a map of the United States on it. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. So this is the this is the home page of the app. So DRA, we call it Days Redistricting App. That's what everybody calls it. Um, it is an app that you know you could you can do redistricting for anywhere in the country, Congress, all the way down to you know counties and cities like like we're doing today. Um, <clears throat> now uh, I'm logged in right now. I mean, in Mary's doc, she talks about how to sign up. You sign up with a just email password, uh, and you know there's a privacy policy you can look at. We we don't sell your email address or anything anything like that. Um, so um, I'm already logged in. So we'll just let's just jump into the starter map. So in that document, there is a link, and you can just click on the link or plop it into your browser, which is what I just did here. I just copied and pasted, and that takes you to this this map of this. This is the current map of the Seattle you know, city council. Um, oh, let, let me just say, um, you know, we have a pretty small group. So if you want to just jump in and ask questions anytime, you know, go, go ahead. And maybe Elsa, if you, you, if you're monitoring the chat or something, you can just kind of say, Hey, Dave, stop. I have a question. Um, and I'll sort of stop partway through anyway to kind of uh, pause for some questions. <clears throat> so uh, let me just close that there. So, so this is what current districts look like in Dave's redistricting. Okay. Um, so what um, the first thing, if you want to work on your own map, the first thing you need to do is make a copy of this map. You can see up here kind of in the upper left, it says view only. That's because this is the map that Mary created. Uh, if you look at, you hover over the paintbrush, you can make an editable copy of that. So let's go ahead and click that. Do you want to make a copy? Yes. So it's going to make a copy and then it'll show up in your My Maps folder. You can see I've got lots of maps because I'm always, I'm always playing around here. Um, so there's that copy of Seattle City Council. Let's go ahead and edit that. Okay. And, and here we have uh, that same map. Now it doesn't have quite the exact same settings because what you see here is the precinct lines, which wasn't in that other view. 
and I'm going to show you how to turn those on and off. Um, so let's, <clears throat> excuse me, let's look here at the left hand panel. You can kind of see on the left side, there are, there's this, uh, a, a panel called the district selector. And you can see there's seven districts because we have seven districts. Um, there's a population column. So that says, here's how much population, total population is in that each of those districts. And the deviation is the deviation from that ideal target population of you know, 105,200 and, and whatever, right? So this is, as you, change this map by assigning precincts to different districts, you're going to see this updated in real time. So you can kind of look at it to get a feel for, okay, to get closer and closer to the ideal number that you're trying to hit for each district, because that's, that's an important thing to do. Um, there's also this lock here. So uh, you can click on the top one and it unlocks them all or locks them all. Um, Locking, it's just a nice thing to have because once you kind of get one of your districts right and you, you don't want to touch it, but you're kind of painting with the mouse along the edge of it, you could easily paint over it a little bit by mistake. And But locking it will prevent that from happening. So it's just a real nice feature as you go through that process. And so, you know, the metaphor here is painting the map. And so just I'll, I'll kind of zoom in a little bit and let's just say, um, so we know district seven here, I'm gonna put these labels here. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but I'm gonna put the district labels and lines on. <clears throat> okay, so you can see the green is district seven, three over here and two. So I'm gonna say, let's take uh, district three, okay? And I'm going to click the paintbrush. So that puts, puts us in paint mode. And then you can see now as we hover over a precinct, it, it's shaded a little bit because that says, oh, if, I'm, if I click that, I'm going to paint it. Okay. So I, I click, you know, it's just clicking the left mouse button. That's what I'm doing there. And it just painted that precinct to become part of District 3. So I can click a few more times. Okay, right there. So we just painted a few districts into district three and you can see, oh, now, now we actually have, you know, more people in district three, but we took some of those people out of district seven. Okay, you can kind of see how that change goes. If you wanna paint a different district, you just click, okay, district two, I'm gonna take a few precincts out of district three. So that's kind of the, the, the basic uh, way that you change this map. Um, now, going back up here, I'm gonna click the hand. The hand puts you in pan mode, which means you're not painting. And so you can move the map. You hold the left mouse down and grab it and you know, move it around. It's, it's really like Google Maps in that way. Um, you can also, you know, zoom in, zoom out with those controls, or if you have a mouse wheel um, or whatever other metaphor, you know, for zooming in, like if, if you have a Mac or whatever, you know, uh, we'll zoom in and zoom out. It's sort of a, it's just like Google Maps in, in terms of those kinds of controls. <clears throat> um, also up here, a couple of other things, uh, there's an erase button. So, what you might use that for is you kind of say, um, well, I know I need to take people out of district seven, but I don't know which, where I want to put them yet. So why don't I erase some of these precincts? Okay, so what I'm doing, um, I'm, you know, I'm clicking the left mouse button or you can hold the left mouse button down and then just kind of move the mouse, kind of sweep to do multiple districts uh, together, okay? So, okay, so uh, we got pretty close to our target now for district seven, so I'll stop doing that. But that's a, that's a way you might use the erase button, just kind of, I, I haven't figured out if those are gonna go in two or three or one, 
but we know they're not going to go in seven. So let's just erase that. It really depends on how you like to how you like to work. Dave, mm -hmm. can I ask you? Um, I think we're not being able to see the precinct details on the right side. Oh, okay. It's maybe um, just I think I think they're yeah. So if you um, do you see uh, this? Yes, now that's better. Better. Okay, maybe yeah. it was just the the um, the ratio. But with length and, and width probably wasn't right for yeah. uh, the, the way the, the window. Okay, good, good. Um, and, and that actually that, that's a um, a good a good segue, Elsa, into that what you see on the right, the precinct details is what is so if you hover over a precinct, we're going to show you in that right hand panel the details for that panel mm -hmm. for, for that precinct so mm -hmm. total population we have the demographic breakdown voting age population and we also have an election a composite of elections um, now when it comes to the city of seattle i think the election data which we the election data we have is only sort of president and governor it's these statewide races it's really probably not that interesting for Seattle um, because you know we, we don't have um, much of a partisan divide. So there's a way you can remove that data just so it doesn't get in the way. And what you do is you, there's this uh, gear icon kind of in the upper right hand corner. So you click on that, it brings up this panel and this thing, the data selector allows you to select which data sets you're going to look at and use for for different things that I'll show you in a minute. Um, but since we don't care about election, we can elections. We, let's go down here and click hide election data and partisan analytics, right? Because they're really not going to be relevant for us here. So I click that, click apply, and then that goes away. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's let's go back over here, looking at the left hand panel again, and kind of just uh, explain some of this. So this this um, let's go down to the overlays one first, and I'll come back to colors. So overlays is just you know you can set a background map. So let's turn the background map on. We we already turned on the district lines. Let's turn the just the precinct lines off. Okay, so yeah, it's a little less cluttered that way. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what you like. You can turn them on, you can turn them off. Um, you can turn on county lines, city lines. Obviously, in this case, those are not really relevant. Um, one other thing that, uh, that Mary talked about in her document um, is this precinct labels. So if I click that, I get this dialog that comes up and then you can select pieces of data that are going to show up right on the map for each precinct. Now, this is the same data that's in that right hand panel, but you know, it can be easier to see right on the map. So let's just select total population. We could do a couple different things. So we, you know, we could do uh, like we could do white population, which of course with the total will show you the non-white population too, because that's just the, mm -hmm. the, um, the subtraction of that if you wanted to. So that's something you can kind of play around with. But let's just do total pop and I'll hit apply. And now you can see the numbers show up right on the map. Uh, okay, so now as we zoom in, you can see more of the numbers show up. So essentially what's going on here is that, um, you know, we, we've got some algorithm that's not gonna show you the numbers for every precinct if they're all overlapped because then you can't read them anyway. So there may be some precincts, like I'm gonna turn the lines back on again. You can see there's some precincts where there, there's no number and you just have to zoom in a little bit more and then that shows up. You can see that one just showed up, okay. Um, and you also like, see this one, this big one, it's not showing up and it's because we have the three here the uh, which is the district label. So if I turn that off, you can see that number shows up. So if it's not there, just kind of zoom in, or maybe if there's, it's because some other um, piece of text is is sort of blocking it. We just try to be um, 
clean about what we're going to show so it doesn't get real messed up and you know so you can't read it so that's a real this is a real nice option because you can see a little more broadly what the population is as you're you're painting so you can kind of say oh i need i need that much population it's like going to be those three or four precincts okay so that's um this panel you know you can turn these on and off as you as you will just click that turns those labels off, click it back, it'll turn them back on again. There's a little drop down here if you wanna change them, okay? So, and then up here, um, we typically are showing the map colors. That means the colors of the districts. Uh, now you could also change that, you gotta click this demographics. And so now what, what we just changed is we're showing the demo demographics like uh, for each district along the scale here. So this is just all minorities. So what percentage of, of uh, wh what's the percentage of the minority population in each of these districts? And so as we get on this scale toward the, the, the redder, purpler side, it's a greater percentage of um, minorities in the district as a whole. And then if you want to click this, you, you could look at individual minorities as well. So I just say, okay, let's just look at the, the Asian population. So now we're saying we're, we're painting the map according to the Asian voting age population of the entire district. Okay. So, you know, those, that, that could be interesting to look at. I'll click back on the map colors. And now under this precinct section, we also have the demographics. We, we're hide the partisan lean is not showing up here because we turned that off. It probably, it shouldn't show up here either, but so that's a, that's just a bug, but um, let's click all minorities for precincts. And, and, and look what just happened. So the districts, the, the, the precincts that were already painted to be in some district, they didn't change any. So the district map colors kind of takes precedence. But these precincts that we had unassigned, so they were not assigned to any district. Now they are showing the um, minority representation of those individual precincts. So where this could be interesting, it, if you were trying to, for example, um, build, let's say you, you, you wanted to build a second majority non-white district in, in Seattle, uh, which is theoretically possible. Um, you know, we have one non-white district now, which is district two, you know, majority non-white voting age population. Um, but if you were trying to build another one or see if you could, if that was your goal, then what you could do here, so let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on district, uh, well, let's just leave it on district two. I'm gonna click the only current box there, okay? And so now what, what that's saying is show the color of the district only for the current one the one that, that's, that's selected over here in the district selector. So only district two has its color. Everything else is colored by the precinct. And, and I've told the precinct to, to be colored by the, uh, the all minorities. So in other words, what's the, the, um, the non-white population, right? So zooming out just a little bit here, you can kind of, you can see now that outside of district two, there's some areas down here in district one that are uh, majority non-white population. In fact, I can hover over here, like on, on that precinct and I can see voting age population is 36 and a half percent white. So the rest is non-white um, and it's a, a, you know, a mix of Hispanic, black, Asian populations, right? So. Uh, and then up here as well, there's some more uh, districts that are majority non-white. So if that's your goal, you know, in making a map, you know, you can use this, uh, these 
controls over here on the left to kind of give you a better sense of, of where you want to try to paint your district. Okay. So, okay. Enough of that for right now. I'm going to unclick that. I'll unclick the only current. And now we've got our um, back to our, our districts here. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, let's see here. Ah. So down at the bottom here is this custom overlays. Okay. So um, what what Mary did in the starter map is she took a number of overlays um, and added them to this map. So there are this, the current city council districts, which of course is what we've got here, except for the edits that I, I just made. Um, community reporting, I, I'm not sure exactly what all these are. The elementary school uh, district areas, the neighborhood districts, uh, neighborhoods so that there's two different, I guess, ways of um, kind of looking at neighborhoods on the map and urban centers and villages as well. So, so there's all these different overlays. So let's, let's kind of take a look at those a little bit. Um, now, what you can do here is um, there's this little kind of paint bucket. So you click on that for one of the overlays and this gives you some controls here for that particular overlay. So right now we're showing the lines of the current council district. So I could turn that off and you can see, I don't know if you could see that, the, some lines went away. Um, or you could click the fill. So now we've filled that in. I turn that off or you could click the, um, the text and now you can see the district one, district two, you know, that's the label on those. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm going to turn all of these off for the council districts. Let's see. I'm not sure. Those are all off right now. Elementary schools. Let's go to just the neighborhoods and let's turn the lines on for the neighborhoods there. Okay. So you can see now um, we've got these kind of purplish lines, or lavender, I guess, um, that are showing us kind of where the neighborhood boundaries are. Um, and so I'm going to click the A, and so we'll get the text of all those neighborhoods on there. So, so this could be a really useful thing um, for, you know, really considering the neighborhood boundaries when you're you're making your map, okay? Now, uh, another thing to think about along these lines, and, and this is, I think, uh, to me, it's, it's pretty important because, you know, as Elsa mentioned, uh, community input is a really important part of this process. And so what, what I, I don't know, certainly, but maybe you all have a, a, a real sense of is what are, what are, what's your community? What are the communities in Seattle that are important to be considered when the map is drawn? Okay, when the commission draws its map. So, um, so what I wanna show you next here is how to make a community map and then import it back into the application. So you can see, you know, if, does this map split the community or not, right? I mean, that's kind of maybe one of the most relevant questions when you come to, when it comes to communities, okay? Uh, Dave, there's, there's a couple of questions in the chat. One is that yes. can the four maps shown um, as proposals are, um, can they be overlaps? Um, the, the format? Yeah, what? the four maps that, um, the maps that the commission um, has proposed. I'm not sure. I mean, um, th these overlays can overlap each other. Um, so, so, I'm, so I'm not asking overlap. I said overlay. Overlay, oh. yeah. Um, I guess I'm, I'm still not clear <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, so these are overlays on the map, all these, 
all these things, these custom overlays or overlays on the map. So are you saying so that like the commission's map or the old one as an overlay? Is that? Yes, what I'm asking is the commissioners propose four different maps. Can yeah. they also be, can be used as one as overlays? Yes, yes, they, they, they can. Um, what, what you need to do, so they're not in here already, but if you wanna add an overlay, so we'd, you'd have to have that, that, you know, let's say the commission's number one map, that computer generated map, it would have to be in a form of like a shape file um, or a GeoJSON, which is kind of a shape file representation. I don't know if they're in those forms. A PDF doesn't work, but a shape file uh, does work. A shape file is, is a pretty common format um, for, for, for maps. And I, I know that that's what the GIS folks, you know, use shape files a lot. Yes, um, and we, we have them in those forms. I wonder if we can, is that something that we could add to it now? I mean, we could send to you and help. Uh, if, if, you, yeah, if you want it, yeah. Oh, um, we'd love to. Yes, we have those. Thank you okay. for that question, John. Yes, we can. We have them and we have them in those files that only GIS people can open. <laughs> I, have, I have no use <laughs> in helping them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you email it to me, I'll, I, will, I, will, I will do that. Um, let's see. I'll have to look at my email here. Okay. Um, so the, the way you do that is, but just, just sort of in general, uh, Joanna, so like if you had another shape file, um, you could click this gear icon. And so this is kind of how, this is the managing of these overlays. And then you could say, add a layer. So a layer would be a shape file or a GeoJSON file adding a map is adding a, a map that's already in DRA, which is what I'm gonna show you with the community map as well. Okay, so, um, so why, don't, why don't I keep going? And then if I get that map in a little while, I can, I can add that in. Was, was there another question uh, at this point in time? Um, I think there was one on, I can't see the neighborhood lines, but I think they're the, the, the uh, pink ones, right? The, the pink, yeah, sort of lavender ones. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I, and I know, um, uh, I mean, I, that sort of just brings me to one, one little aside here. So I know sometimes color, you know, uh, uh, some, a lot of people have different issues seeing different colors. Um, one of the things we have here is this change palettes button. So if you look at change palettes um, for this different scales we were using, like for demographics, we have a lot of different palettes here that you could choose from. And also for the districts, you could choose a different palette. So there's some, I know the, uh, the Viridis is supposed to be a really good one for a lot of the uh, different color blindness um, stuff. So, so those are there. And so you could cho choose a different one for demographic scale, uh, you know, for, for the colors, for the maps, et cetera. So, so that's available. One other thing along those lines, if you go to this gear icon over here and you click on this top part, the map settings, you can change the color of the individual districts individually. So I have a palette um, that's already picked. And then I, you, you know, you could say, oh, I don't, I don't really like that green. Okay, so here's some different choices. Um, these maybe aren't the, the best choices, but you know you can say, okay, I want that one to be blue, All right? And then you have to hit apply, and then that happens. Okay, so that's always possible. Um, I'm going to undo that. So that that's an undoable action as well. So, okay. Okay, so let's go and make a community map real quick, and then we're going to come back and and add it to here, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna up here on the, the top bar, you can see there's this maps, little maps icon. Uh, a lot of these controls, if you don't know what they are, just hover over them and we usually have a tooltip 
that tells you what, what they are. So that's the maps. And this is like the feedback button. So if you have any questions, comments, bugs, you click the feedback button and fill out the form and it sends email to us. And, and you know, we try to keep, keep up on that. So I'm gonna click the maps. It takes us back to this My Maps page. And you can see here on the upper right, there's these buttons for new map, new community and import. So you can import a map um, from, from a block assignment file, from a shape file, that kind of thing, using the import button. I won't go into that, but that is there. Uh, you can create a new map for any state, et cetera. Um, you can create a new community really for any state as well. So let's do the community, so new community. And what this does, it, it defaults to like essentially one shape. I'm gonna say Washington here because it's our state. And a community map, you have to just pick the whole state. You can't really pick a, a city for the community map, but then you can, you know, really what we're trying to do here is we're gonna zoom in on a small number of precincts or blocks that define your community, create a map for that, and then we can import it back into the other map. Okay, so we just have one shape. You could have a community that has two or three or more separate shapes. Um, so I'll just hit apply. I didn't give it a name, <clears throat> um, but you can always click on the name and then give it a name. So I'm gonna say, you know, uh, I'm gonna say Southwest Lake Union. Okay, that's, that's where we're gonna put our little community, submit. Now, this is obviously all of Washington State. So I'm gonna just zoom in. I'm using my mouse wheel here, uh, zooming into the city of Seattle. Okay. And, okay, so here's Lake Union. So let's just say, um, my community is, is sort of the Southwest Lake Union. So I'm gonna click on some precincts here and we'll say, okay, it's kind of, let's say it's everything up uh, what east of uh, Aurora, east of 99, pretty much. So we'll just do that. And let's, why not add that there too? Okay, so let's say, so now I'm gonna stop painting. Let's say that's, my community, okay. So I've created the map and it's already, you know, just, I, I, I didn't mention this before, you know, everything is saved in the cloud. So you don't have to save it or anything. It's just there. So we're done with that. Let's go back to maps and you can see it there, South Lake, Southwest Lake Union. And then here's our copy of uh, Seattle Council that we've been working on. So I'll click that click edit and we'll go back to here okay so you can see that still has all the neighborhoods um now i'm going to i guess I, i've kind of i pulled my there so i can see it better hopefully you can see that down to the bottom um so um i'm gonna let's let's first turn off the neighborhoods just so we so we turn off the labels, turn off the lines. So that's kind of done and just click away on that. Um, let's turn off these precinct labels right now, just so it's a little cleaner look. Okay. And now I'm gonna go to my, my gear icon and then add a map. And you can see right here, we, you know, we default, there's a search box up top so you can, search for the names of maps, et cetera. Um, this is it's a little more complicated than I wanna explain right now, but we have a pretty advanced search mechanism in here and also in that My Maps. Um, but basically it's saying, we're looking at community maps, we're looking at My Maps and for this state, and of course right there is the Southwest, Southwest Lake Union one. So I'm gonna pick that. Uh, and then I'm going to apply it, okay? And there it is, right? So that community shows up right there. Now it's a little bit bright. They, they come out a little bit bright pretty much all the time, 
So you can change the fill opacity. So this is how opaque it is. I'm gonna lower that a little bit. So, okay, that's a lot better. And then, you know, maybe we don't need, uh, we don't need the fill but let's make the line a little thicker. So you can kind of dink around with this, right? I'm gonna say, let's make the line, oh, that's the line color. Well, okay, let's make the line color something, uh, a dark lavender, but let's make it thicker, which is the line width here. Uh, okay, let's go up to two. What do you think? Let's go to three. All right. So you can see the community on here. So I think for, for, for you all, um, you know, if you are able to build a map like that of your community and then look at it and, you know, you might take a map that somebody else has made for the whole, you know, city, city council districts and say, oh, what is that map? How does that map affect my community, right? So you can make a copy of that map you know, just like we did at the beginning. And then you can add your community map to it and kind of see what, what's going on. Now, or maybe um, maybe you have a, a number of different communities, maybe that you can, uh, if you're able to work with other communities, so you, maybe there's five or six different communities working together, you could get all those community maps you know, share them with each other and then do it all at once. So you can sort of say, oh, well that, you know, that keeps this community get together, but oh, it splits this other community into three pieces. So that's no good. And then work with each other to kind of push back on things that, that really look like they are not what, you know, the way you think that they should be. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. So um, let me just give you a couple of other little things here, uh, talk about some features around that, and then really kind of take, have, have time for more questions and discussions. Um, so one of the things I haven't done so far is go down to the block level. Okay, we've been dealing with precincts, um, but it is, you know, precincts are made up of census blocks, census blocks are pretty small. So you can edit down to the census block level. And if you're making a community map, that might actually kind of be more appropriate because precincts might get kind of big. And in terms of, well, these blocks over here are part of the community, but these other blocks are, are not part of the community. So the way you edit blocks is there's this little um, box here up at the top next to the paint, you know, there's the paintbrush, the erase, and then it says county, city, precinct, block. So you could paint a whole county, but obviously that's not relevant for, for what we're doing. Um, but we can go down to the block level, we click block, and then we click paint, okay? So let's say I'm, I'm gonna paint this in some other color. Let's say I'm gonna do it in district uh, one, there, it would, that's fine. Okay, so when I click on a precinct, it shatters the precinct into blocks. Okay, mm -hmm. so now you can see those block lines. And as I hover over, you can see on the right panel, the population of the individual block. Okay, so I could say, oh, I want this block in district one, this one, so now I'm just clicking on the individual blocks. Okay, some of them, You'll find if you if you start doing this, a lot of the a lot of blocks have zero population. Sometimes they're part of part of the highway or or water, like like this out here. Okay. When you're when you're done with that one, you can click the checkbox, which heals them back together. Okay. It's just that's just how we we work on that. Um, now, one thing you might notice. Um, you can see like when I hover out here, um, there's, yeah, I'm, I'm shading that, that water area. So um, if I turn the precinct lines on, you can see, so, so look here, so I'm, I'm hovering over this piece of water 
if you look at the, the, the details, even if I say the precinct details, it says part of district, or sorry, precinct, you know, 36, 17, 29, comprised of two blocks, okay? So that's two blocks, two census blocks of that precinct. And now if I go over here onto the kind of land, then um, I've got 23 blocks of that same precinct, okay? So what's going on here is that, you know, Mary or, or somebody on her team took the time to split the water blocks off of the, the land blocks. Because it turns out that, in, at least in Seattle, um, all these blocks along the edge of the water, all these precincts along the edge of the water share, have some on land and some on the water. And, and in a way, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a pain um, because what happens is if you just, if you don't do this, which I wouldn't recommend doing it because it's kind of a real pain, then um, once you paint a precinct, it's going to paint all that part of the water as well. So it just doesn't look as nice. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't, doesn't look as nice. But um, I wanted to point it out because, you know, because Mary, you know, and her team, you know, they did this work, but if you are painting like, okay, so this is in uh, district seven right now. So if I paint that water piece as part of district seven, we put it back together. Okay, so we, we kind of heal the, the, the split of that precinct. So we put it back together. And then for you to, you can always undo it, okay? But for you to kind of do this by hand to take those blocks off again, it's kind of a pain. If you do this and, and you get this right, don't worry about it. It might, it might look a little different, but I just want to point it out because you might kind of say, oh, did I do something wrong? No, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just, um, it's just that because the starter map split off those water uh, blocks that to, to make it look nice, that you know this this could happen to you as you're sort of painting along the edges of the water. Okay, <laughs> kind of a little a little strangeness, um, but anyway, that's how you paint blocks. Okay, you go to the block mode. You go into paint mode, you click on the, um, on the precinct and then it shatters the block and it lets you kind of pick which blocks to paint. Okay, that's how we do that. Got a growling, growling dog there. He's, he, he's, he's lazy, doesn't want to go outside, but my daughter's going to take him out. <laughs> There's a comment on the chat about, uh, remember houseboats and people who live on boats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're counted somehow. I mean, I, yeah, I guess uh, um, it's, it's hard to see exactly. Like maybe if we look at uh, Lake, Lake Union or something, but um, yeah. I mean, most of, you know, most of Lake Union is, is this one kind of big, big precinct here. So um, now, now one of the things just, um, you know, when you think about houseboats and things uh, <laughs> makes me think of is, um, I mean, I'm just gonna look over here on the left panel. Um, so you can see this top row here, it, it says un, right? Cause that's the unassigned population. So one of the requirements is you have to put, everybody has to get put into some district. Okay, so if you forget, a you know, a few blocks that are those, you know, those houseboats uh, and there's population in those blocks, it'll show up here as a few people that didn't get put in a, in a, a district. And, and that's, you know, that's, uh, that doesn't meet the requirements of a, a full map. Now, we do have a couple of tools that can help you on that front and that's in this tools thing. Okay, so I click on tools. And you can see there's these different tools. So find unassigned precincts. You click on that. And what it's going to do is walk through 
all the unassigned precincts, kind of zooming in on them so you can see where they are. Uh, sometimes it's easy to have a little, you know, a little tiny precinct. Maybe it doesn't even, um, maybe it doesn't even have people in it. We're going to count that as unassigned. So some of those water parts of precincts uh, may show up in this. Uh, you don't have to care about those, but but for for an unassigned precinct here in downtown that has population in it, well, you know, you need to assign that it, to get a complete map. There's also a tool to find non-contiguous districts, right? Districts have to be contiguous. They can't have separate pieces. Um, it's just one of the general requirements. So you click that and it's gonna show us all the different pieces of non-contiguous districts. So here's the main part of district one, click the arrow, and there's that little piece of district one that I just painted, right? Uh, let's see what else is not contiguous. Okay, so there's district seven and Ah, there's a little piece of District 7 that we, we forgot about. I forgot about. Okay. So this sort of helps you find some of those things to kind of get your map just right, you know, usually near the end of the process. Um, there's, there's some other ones here too that are, are interesting, but I won't go into those. Okay. A couple more things, and then we'll just open it up for questions. Um, we've been looking at the map. There's a little tool here. I can just click that. It should zoom out to the whole the whole map. Uh, let's let's go ahead and get rid of those precinct lines so that looks better. Uh, there's these on the upper right here. There's these other buttons. So statistics. Let's click that. So this gives you a table, and it shows you uh, a couple of things. The population. It shows you the deviation by percentage. Um, now we don't, you know, the app doesn't know kind of what the rules are uh, for every every different uh, you know jurisdiction that that we might be redistricting. So it's kind of up to you to sort of say to say, oh yeah, that has to be one percent. So mm -hmm. um, we're not going to. I mean, we we're flagging the thirteen because the overall between the biggest and the smallest is 13%. That seems too high. This shows you where there's some non-contiguous districts. And then we give you the voting age population with all the demographic breakdown. Uh, and we highlight minority opportunities, which we start highlighting at about 35%. Uh, and then, you know, so you can see it's a light highlight for these three that are 37, 38% minorities. Um, and then there's the one district, district two, which has almost 65% minority. Now there's no individual minority that has that percentage. So there's no highlighting under the uh, individual minorities. And, and just by the way, um, these numbers here for uh, black, Asian, native and Pacific, these are the Kind of race combination numbers. So uh, if, if you've studied the census, the census has, for example, the designation is Black or African American alone or in combination with other races. And so that's what this number is showing. Okay. And same for the other kind of ma main um, minority uh, populations, the Asian, Native, Pacific American. That's uh, sorry, Pacific Islander and and Native Hawaiian is that category. Native is the American Indian or Alaska Native category. Okay. Um, so that uh, is what statistics is. There's an analyze here. We have we kind of score the maps um, on different things. It, this is the splitting isn't really relevant because it's kind of county splitting, and obviously we're within a county but it gives you a sense of you know, minority representation score. Uh, it's probably not really, uh, the way we score is more geared towards states. So uh, it, this isn't probably that um, important. Uh, now compactness is compactness. So, so that is a, a valid 
number. Um, and that's just, a, you know, whether the shapes are compact. There's a couple different algorithms that we average together. Okay. Um, you can compare your map to another map. So for example, um, we've got a current map. So I can pick a map and I can say, well, let's see, here's the Seattle City Council current. You can see I've played around with the Seattle City Council a lot. I have, I have all these different ones. I, I like making these maps. So I've done this a bunch, but here's the current council. I'll pick that. And you can see we're pretty close because we haven't changed things very much. But here's an interesting table. As you get farther down the process, if you are making full council maps, um, this table here will show you um, how the old map, you know, if you pick the old council map, flows into the new map. So you can see over here, um, and you know, in the very little I did, you know, 99% of district one comes from the old district one, but then half a percent comes from district seven. And, and of course, as you build, a, you know, some real maps, these numbers are gonna be bigger, but this is an interesting way of saying how different is the old map from the new map that I'm, I'm looking at, okay. so. That might be of interest to you. Advanced metrics is mostly about sort of partisanship. There's a lot of bias metrics there. Um, but I will point out, it, we do have a, com a community splitting uh, analysis here. So if you have a bunch of communities and, and a map, you can click analyze here. It's, um, it's a little bit, you at least see you know, whether the community is split or not. It can give you that total. The kind of the numbers here, effective splits and uncertainty, you'll have to read the article to really understand what, what those mean. It's, it's a little bit obscure. These little eye icons uh, can usually, they give you more information. There's, there's articles that we've written, uh, mostly my colleague has written about this analysis that really dive into the details about what this stuff means and what algorithms for all this analysis uh, where, where it comes from. So if you're really into that, uh, we have a medium page where, where we have a lot of those articles. Okay, lastly, uh, Mary points out this in her document, there's export. So that's that little icon. You can export as a block assignment. Uh, you can export as a shape file down here. So um, there'll probably be instructions uh, from the commission. So if you create maps, uh, you know, in DRA, then the commission, you know, will, will say, oh yeah, we would like a shape file or we would like a block assignment file. And so you just follow those instructions to provide whatever data, or maybe they just want to link because, you know, they, they know how to do, they know how to get these out of DRA and into the, um, the software that that's being used by the the King County folks, the GIS folks. Um, so these are ways that that can happen. Um, you can also share. Uh, so you just click that little share icon. So this, if you copy this link and you send it to somebody else, um, that person can open it up in a view only mode. So it's a way to share the map. You can click the edit button and you get a slightly different URL. And you, if you send that to one of your colleagues, you can edit this together. And just like Google Docs, you can edit together in real time. So you can both be working on the map at the same time. In fact, any number of people um, and, and those edits will show up fairly quickly. Um, you know, the other person's edits will show up pretty, pretty quickly, so, okay. Um, you can publish maps as well. Um, there is a groups feature that could be interesting. I won't go into detail on that, um, but it's a way that um, you can create a group. You can, somebody can manage the group to say, okay, uh, these five people are part of the group. And I can, uh, all these maps are group. Uh, the group can access those maps. And then nobody outside the group can, can see that. So, um, 
I won't go into any more detail, but it's it's there. If you want to know, you can send us uh, some email, or or we could we could do another um, do another talk sometime on that. Okay, I think that's uh, that's probably enough for right now. Um, so let me open it up for some questions. More questions. Uh, Dave, this, this is Steve Fenley. Can you go back to the original map you started with? Uh, the view only map? Uh, the, the one of Seattle. Uh, the, the one that you start, you, you opened up first to start this whole discussion. Sure. So um, I'll go back to maps. So one thing, if you click on, on this maps here, you get this, uh, this little panel that pops out and um, you can see it's got my groups, my communities, but it also has this shared with me category. So if I click that, these are all the maps that were shared with me. Now, I think somewhere, yeah, here's this, here's the Seattle map that we started with. Okay. Um, can you so open I'll, that? I'll can view that? that. Yep. And then that's coming up right okay. there. Okay. Can you zoom in real tight on this? Mm -hmm. Which area? Uh, anywhere. So, okay. Just re really, re okay, so it's, I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, do you have uh, zip code boundaries in this at all? Uh, we don't have it. No, we, we don't have it. Um, if you were able to get and like an overlay, so a shape file or a GeoJSON file that had the zip code boundaries, you could use that custom overlays. Uh, to do that. I'm not sure if that exists, um, but it might exist somewhere. Thank you. You, you did a great job. I really appreciate it. Are, are you here locally? Oh, thank you. Where are you? Oh, where do, where do I live? Yeah. Uh, I, I live, I'm in District 4, so I'm, oh, I'm up, up you're, there. Not you're, far you're, from you're, you're local. I just, okay. I'm thank local. You. Yeah. Yep. Long time Seattle resident. As are uh, all, well, I guess three of my four colleagues. One, one just moved to Port Townsend, <laughs> so. Um, Dave, I have a couple of uh, questions and also comments. We mm -hmm. may be able to get the, the zip code um, overlay for you, as well as the four uh, maps that the commission is, um, has put out mm -hmm. to include it in the overlays as, as options. And so is it, if, when we send that to you, is that something that you guys can add to it, right? Um, so, well, you could, you know, as, as far as the zip code, you mean, ma'am? Yeah. Well, so the thing to do would be, you know, if you give it to Mary and her team, um, she could add it to the starter map if you wanted to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can do that. I'm gonna leave it up for questions, but I have some questions. Um, one is, um, so the same way that the, the JS consultant did, is there a way to do an automatic map that just, we just add some uh, options and then it shows up. And then when it says, I just want all the um, uh, BIPOC people and then <laughs> <laughs> in one district. Um, uh no, we, we don't have any like automated capability. Um, it. It's, I know it's something that people are talking about a little bit around the, the country, but it's, um, it's a bunch of work <laughs> that, um, you know, I, I think it, it's, it's maybe interesting, but I think at least for this, you know, this cycle of redistricting, I, I don't think it's um, yes. really something that people are, uh, no, nobody's really used it that I've heard of. <laughs> yes, and that's why we. I wanted to clarify that the commission is using a different tool to come up with their maps, and the commission also chose this map so the public can use it. So there's two tools that are being used to create the maps, and there are others where people can use as mm -hmm. well, but these right. are the ones that the commission has um, chosen to uh, put up to the public, including some training. And um, right. we will be, uh, the commission will be uh, updating the public on how they uh, <coughs> the uh, 
maps that the community creates and we will make that to the public. Um, let me see other questions I had. Oh, so I had a question about when people save the maps and create their maps in the public, mm -hmm. those only get saved to the user, right? They're not public or are they, or do they, or is there a possibility to see what people are creating without sharing? Um, so yeah, when you, so when you create a map, it, it's saved in the cloud. So it's always there in the cloud under your account. Um, it is not visible to anybody else, to any other user, unless you, you know, either send a link to somebody or you publish it. So you can publish it. When you publish it, um, you know, if I go back to this, you know, my maps here, and I, I click my copy, you can see uh, there's this publish button. Mm -hmm. So if, if you publish it, that's publishing it for every, everyone who has an account to see. So, you know, all thousands of users, you know, if they are, are interested, a lot of people have published maps, um, uh, you know, around the country. Okay. And that's something that uh, another community or another member of the public can use to edit or work from? Yeah. Once you publish a map, anybody could duplicate that map and then take it from there. You know, they could make their own copy and, and there's no, you know, we have no, uh, uh, no way of tracking that or, you know, whatever, copywriting it and something like that. You know, but it. if you don't publish it and you don't share it, nobody else can see it. I see, I see. Um, co comparing maps. Yes, that was my question. I think you mm -hmm. got to it. You got to it when, um, right. um, yeah, when you share that. So it may be a good thing to put in the instructions, that final publishing, <coughs> I can't remember if it's there, mm -hmm. uh, publishing to make sure that people can use it and replicate it. And is mm -hmm. that that's what I believe King County, the GIS King County folks did by creating this map where we started is that the case what well, I'm, I'm not sure what i'm not sure what you were so mary's asking. map the one yeah. that we started with is that what she did she published the map or was that a different process um i don't know if she published it but but she shared that link right so there's a the view only link that's in the document so anybody can take that link and that's that's how we that's how we started with that so that is if i go back that's what this is um, so this is Mary's map that we are looking at from the link that's in that Word document. Got okay. it. Yeah. And let um, me ask a question to the public because we have two more minutes and I, um, I appreciate <coughs> the patience. And this seems to me like it needs um, somebody to put themselves to work on a proposal or a group of people going through a process. Um, what are your thoughts and reactions about how you may use the tool and what else do we need to do um, to make this more accessible? You can come up right. uh, meet, and tell us or send me send us a message, um, especially for, I you know those are your uh, planning of having community meetings about the maps. Right, so yeah, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really good question because um, it can, you know, it can be a little overwhelming, right? There's a lot here. Um, and so if, you, if you're part of a, a community organization um, that, you know, I would say, you know, find the best person in your community organization, or maybe somebody, somebody, somebody knows, you know, or, or some young person, you know, that, that is, um, I mean, some of you are young, but, um, uh, you know, somebody who's a little more computer savvy to help you if you don't feel comfortable um, and, and then kind of work together and you could have, and as I said, you can have a few, uh, a few people working, to, you can work on the same map, to, but even if you're remote, um, you could have somebody who's maybe a little more tech savvy and you know, two or three of you are on the call going, okay, why don't you, you know, move that there and, and move that there and put that there. Um, and, you can do that pretty quickly. If you have a one person who's kind of doing the drawing, you know, you could see I kind of went pretty fast. I mean, obviously I've used this a lot, but I think for somebody um, who's done this a little bit and is sort of, you know, likes, likes the tech, 
um, you can come up to speed fairly quickly on the main the main thing. So if you find somebody to help you, you can you can get a lot going fairly quickly. Joanna, you have a question. It looks like uh, Joanna has yeah. her hand so, up. Uh -huh. I think that's one reason why I keep wanting to make sure that the four proposed maps are imported because I think only a few people will start drawing completely blankly drawing their own maps. Mm -hmm. And for instance, map one, I, mean, I always wonder, well, why not take map one and look at it well, what's wrong with it? Because it supposedly obeys all the rules, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then what's wrong with that? Or does it work for my for whatever I'm advocating? Or And then right. listen to what other people say doesn't work about it and start sort of tweaking, tweaking it based right. on that. And that makes it, a, you don't have to start from total scratch and I don't right. I only th I think there'll be very few people who will want to do that right yes yeah, starting from another map is really helpful and so you know so you do have the current council map that you can start from which is what you know what this map is that that's shared by link in the document um, but I think that's a good point um, Elsa that that maybe uh, those other four or or there might even be other ones that the commission comes up with that might be uh, starter maps to help help people get started. Um, Actually, you're, this one is the edited map, your edited map. It's not the current map. Well, uh, the one I'm showing on the screen right now is the, the current one. You can see it's the view only map. Um, I went back to that, um, I went back to that, that map. So this is the current one. Well, that's great um, feedback. Um, I think we're gonna do some um, work uh, to make sure that the public can use this very um, easily. I want to be, um, I want to cut us off because we're a little bit, three minutes over, but I am very thankful, um, Dave, for your, um, for this help. Thank you for everybody who was here in the call. If there's other um, comments, there's one comment there that says, we have been working on ways to make this more digestible. We appreciate all the work you've done with this mapping tool, Dave. But we don't, we do understand that even with this tool and some GIS experience, it takes practice. It would help for people to pick up options, to pick options from map rather than needing to be tech savvy. I think that's where the barrier comes in for the public. So we'll take on in consideration and come up with another way in which to maybe use the, the map to compare, I mean, use the app to compare maps and make changes and show the community. I think that that, that would be a good way to, do it and uh, we appreciate you. They're the first ones to do this uh, with us. All feedback, please send us an email message and I will be working and bugging everybody here to get this <laughs> out to the public. So thank you everybody. We're gonna stop recording now and uh, thank you. Thank okay. you everybody. Yep, thank you. And yeah, feel free to ask more questions and we can, we can do this again soon if you'd like. Thank you. Okay. Take care. I think you're the host now and then, okay, I'm gonna leave.